<laughs> Good evening, everybody. Uh, yes, it is really me under here. Uh, I'm wearing a midge net because um, I'm at the side of Derwent Water. It's about three quarters of an hour before sunset and the little flying teeth are out in force. So I, I have this on my head. It's all very fashionable, but it's stopping me from having my face eaten alive. Um, so yes, I might look a little bit silly, but you know what? I would far prefer that than um, itchy skin and itchy scalp all night for nights. Although I haven't got anything on my hands, which I'm regretting. I've already been bitten a couple of times. I've got a thin pair of gloves that I have specifically for doing things like this and I forgot them, they're back in the lodgings. Anyway, so I'm actually here for sunset um, and I've got myself uh, set up, found my composition and I thought I would just explore with you all um, a question that was asked off the back of my, how I would do a long exposure video. Somebody asked the question, um, and I can't remember who, uh, but somebody asked the question, uh, uh, what, when would I uh, calculate a long exposure as opposed to use a function on the Olympus called live time? And it's a really, really good question. Um, and whilst I was having a play with compositions and long exposures, I found myself using live time and I thought, ah, ha, ha, ha. I know what I'll do. Um, so just let's just explain the difference between the two functions. So sometimes uh, with a long exposure, I will I, I, I'll calculate it. Um, I will uh, look at the exposure calculation uh, without any filtration in front, um, and then if I add a six-stop neutral density filter, then I'll just count it on my fingers. So if I start, let's. I make this up for a minute. Let's say it's half a second. Um, then it would be half, one, two, four, eight, 16 seconds. And that would be my starting point. And I would take that exposure, look at the histogram, and then decide whether I need to boost it a little bit. Of course, I'm at the back end of the day, light is failing. So in the 16 seconds, you, you could very well find that the light level has dropped and therefore 16 seconds isn't enough. So it's not that there's anything wrong with the calculation. It's just that, you know, light levels have fallen. Live time is a function on the Olympus where it shows you a histogram building over time. So rather than doing any calculations, you just do all your, your grad choices. Then you use live time to show you uh, the histogram. And then you open the shutter and you close the shutter uh, based on the histogram that you see building on the screen. Um, now I'm going to try and show this to you, which is going to be a little bit of a challenge, but I'm going to give it a go um, and just show you the difference between the two. So let's go behind my stills camera and see if we can do that. Okay, so here's my view of uh, Isthmus Bay, Isthmus Bay on Derwent Water. It's not a particularly original composition, it's the classic composition uh, from this particular location, which is absolutely fine. I have no issue with that. Um, so let's move the camera uh, here. So there's my stills camera, my OMD EM1 Mark III. I've got a, a four stop neutral density grad just to hold the sky back. And then sitting behind that, I have a six stop full neutral density going across the entire scene. So let's, uh, where's the adjustment? Let's do, whoops, let's do that. So I'm going to apologize in advance. This is ever so slightly wobbly. So there's the view on the back of the camera. Uh, you can see quite clearly that the histogram is stacked towards um, the, 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 the darker end. So I would, you know, I would react to that instantly and add some um, exposure compensation. So I think 40 seconds will do it. Oops. Uh, this is, I'm just on normal aperture priority right now. Um, stupidly, I've actually got my cable release in my hand. 
So I'm, because this is um, just, just a demonstration, I'm just going to hit the shutter and we'll wait 40 seconds for that to finish. Okay, so there's my resultant image on the screen. Uh, I'm just going to scroll through the options, check the histogram. Uh, that's the one that really matters, the brightness one. So uh, you could say I've got a little bit of latitude at the, um, at the bright end, but that's, that's not actually too bad. That's not too bad at all. That's 40 seconds at F8 ISO 200. So that's in aperture mode. That's just letting the camera do all the work. So let's now change that to live time. Uh, no, I don't want manual. I want bulb. There we go. Bulb. Right. Um, I've swapped hands for the cable release so I can, uh, I can actually do this now. If you are enjoying this video and would like to support my channel, then please click on the thumbs up icon indicated here. To be notified when I upload new content, which will be every two weeks, then please consider subscribing. It's free and you can unsubscribe at any time. As well as subscribing, click on the bell icon and select all in order to get these notifications. All updates for new videos appear here on the top right hand side of your YouTube homepage. So, what you need to look at is the um the difference on the screen uh, when, it's, um, when it goes off. And what I'd like you to do is pay attention to this area of the screen down here, because that's where the histogram starts to build. So I've got the cable release. I'm going to go click. And it's this bar graph here that you need to watch. Now what I'm doing Every five seconds or so, I am just hitting the um, shutter release on the um, remote, and that lets the histogram refresh. There's 30 seconds, 35, 40. Now we reckoned we could do a wee bit more, didn't we? So let's do 45. 50, yeah, we've got quite a lot. I'll tell you what, I'll stop it at 60, dunk. There you go. And now it'll do um, noise reduction uh, for another 60 seconds. Um, I use noise reduction on the um, Olympuses because simply with a smaller sensor, um, uh, there is a, an, an inherent problem with noise. Um, it's just there um, because I'm, you know, I'm using a smaller sensor camera system, so I always have noise reduction enabled. Um, but then, of course, it means you've got to stand here for another 60 seconds and uh, wait for it to do its stuff. Okay, here we go. Finished cooking. It's now writing to the card. Replay the image. Yeah, that histogram looks nice. Go back to the original one at 40 seconds. Our one on lifetime was 60. And you can see you know, that the spread is a lot, a lot better. And that's really the key difference between the two. So I should make um, a couple of points about um, lifetime. Um, you can only show so many frames. Um, uh, so if you look back over the footage, if you look in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see um, a number out of 24. Um, that's the maximum number of frames um, that uh, the way that I have my camera set up that I can uh, actually uh, show. So every time I press the remote release, uh, it's uh, refreshing that one frame. I can't remember how many, how many I got up to, six or seven, didn't I? Um, but I could only go as far as 24. Additionally, you can set the camera up to auto refresh that frame 
Um, I think I have mine set to every 15 seconds. Um, and then if you hit the, if you, if you press the shutter button one more time, um, you disable that auto refresh um, and it, it, it then relies on you pressing the button. So you can kind of let it do it every 15 seconds for 24 frames, or you yourself can hit the button um, and you will be able to do it 24 times. Kind of depends on the situation that you're in. I think if it got really, really dark and I was doing, I don't know, exposures of several minutes, I would maybe extend the delay between each frame, the auto delay, maybe do it to, to 30 seconds or so, um, you know, let the exposure go. And then when I start to get really to the end of the histogram, that's the time at which I would then start to use the last of my 24 frames um, in order to uh, you know, make sure I got uh, a decent exposure. So, and, and then that, that's, that's it simply. Um, it's either let the camera do the work or use one of the uh, functions that's available in the Olympus system to help you manage the exposure. Um, there's nothing wrong with both of those things. Um, I would say I tend to use um, just aperture priority and um, a calculation and the histogram most of the time, especially for exposures up to up to a couple of minutes, probably. But then if I go beyond a couple of minutes, uh, then I would use live time. If it was dark, for instance, um, so, you know, first thing in the morning, sunrise, you're just starting to get that glow on the horizon. I would probably use live time um, and have the delay set between the frames quite wide um, because of course you'd have to leave the shutter open for a very long time uh, in order to uh, to get a decent exposure and that's it it's as simple as that it really is not uh, rocket science um, it just takes it takes a little bit of setting up but then once you've got it set up you can just select it and away you go so the time is 21.24, sunset is in uh, six, seven minutes. So um, I'm hoping, everything crossed, uh, that we get some glow in the sky and, and the midges go away. Um, I apologize for my face, but um, it was either that or get eaten alive. So I hope that explanation made sense. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments uh, below. Um, and yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, tune in to the next one. Uh, and until then, stay safe, stay well, keep exploring with your camera. Be good, see you soon. Cheers, folks. Take it easy.